and welcome to Thingies, where I'm going to try and attempt to show you a simple design and maybe even print it for you as well. It's my first time. Until now, I've been trying to get to know a free CAD programming program called FreeCAD and sending my creations through email to my mate Dave, who got me into this marvellous technology. Please feel free to comment below this video if you've got any suggestions at all of what I might be doing wrong or a long way around, I'm bound to be. And enjoy our first trip into the third dimension. So buckle up. I've got a funny feeling this one's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. here a genuine problem in that I need to secure these non-purpose microphones to this kit I'm storing for a mate. Being as it's here I may as well put it to use. Masking tape and broom handles with vacuum cleaner pipes is simply not good enough as you can see. But I'm not going to go out and spend money on drum mics and stands because they're not even my drums and I can't play drums. And let's face it, they just don't look the part. But they do serve a purpose. They're showing me where the microphones need to be secured to the broom handles and vacuum cleaner pipes that I'm going to use. So here's an idea and how I'm going to go about it. First of all, I'm going to draw out a rough sketch with a few important measurements of what's needed. Nothing elaborate. It's not like it's going to go into full mass production or anything. It's for my own personal use and references. And nobody else needs to understand it. Which is a good job really. Isn't it? Because I don't think even Colin Furs would be able to make any sense out of this. Then, I take this plan and idea over to the programme that I was talking about earlier. FreeCAD. That I have been using to send my designs over to my mate Dave by email. We are now about to enter the realm of Three Dimensions. So here we are in the computer assisted design program within the three-dimensional realm. At the top left-hand corner, we have a drop-down window that gives us access to multiple action stations. I'm choosing the parts action station. I don't intend on making anything intricate or too precise. There are no moving parts 
or any fancy jiggery pokery. Let's leave that sort of caper for future videos. Essentially, all I am doing is sticking together different three-dimensional shapes or taking a three-dimensional shape out of another. Try not to get too excited because I'm a 3D printing virgin. And it could all go so wrong so easily. Our weapon in this realm of parts comprise of these little three-dimensional shapes giving us our building blocks for success. Here is your inventory highlighting with what you are working with. Click it twice and you can move your building blocks around in the three-dimensional blue nothingness. This is your directional gauge. It lets you know which axis you're on. You will need to tap this from time to time with your keyboard or anything else that is suitably heavy enough to take out your frustrations. This gauge shows you what face of the beast you are looking at. It's an incredible invention. It levitates freely in space until you hold down the left click on it and you can move it where you want and it will stay there. We are not using any of these tape measure icons, mainly because I don't know what they do. Please comment below if you've got any ideas. These are your highly charged weapons. We use these to stick three-dimensional shapes together and detach them by holding down the control button and clicking on the shape you wish to work on. You must learn which shape to click first. This is something I still struggle with to control. These are your cleaning implements. There are going to be times when you are going to need to hide some evidence. I'm just using the chamfer and the radius here. Click on the part of the beast you wish to polish and then choose your cleaning implement and it will ask you how much evidence you need to take away. This will also save time and material in printing. And finally, down here at the bottom left, you have the measurements and placements of the shape you are working on. Bear in mind the limits of your 3D printer. It can only go so far before you have to slice your beast.
Well, it looks like we have all the shapes in all the right places. And we're pretty much there. So it's time to do a bit of cleaning up and get rid of some evidence in a few sharp edges. There's going to be cables running all around and although they are fairly robust they do get trodden on and tripped over and ultimately snagged on sharp edges. And let's not forget a decent drummer is demented and has a disorder for destruction. I click here on the corner line of the part I've just created and it turns green. Holding down the control key on my keyboard allows me to select multiple edges. When I've selected all the edges I wish to round off, I click here and it makes all the, all the selected edges into a radius and asks me how large the radius I require. If I ask it to do a radius that is not possible, the whole thing, the whole part will disappear from sight. Not to worry though, it's not going anywhere. Just change the radius size until it's able to fit it in. And there we go. It looks a lot better and is less likely to snag any cables whilst pulling the microphone in and out. I tried to make everything as flat as possible to the printing bed because I'm not sure how to deal with overhangs. This is where you ask the printer to print something in mid-air and that seems physically impossible to me but apparently it's not. If you add what's called supports to the slicing program which we're going to in two shakes of a lamb's tail. To finish up we select everything in the inventory of parts that we've made with a control key down to select all of them and make the whole part green. Then click file in the top left hand corner and click export making sure to save it in an STL file. Then open it and it takes me straight to the slicing program. I've never been in here before but it looks like all I have to do is to move it into place to print. As I didn't go over the printing parameters it fits all the space which I presume is the printing parameters. When it looks like I've got the part in the right place, I try to make the base of, of the part match with the bed of the printer. Now I'm happy, as I can be, with everything in its placement, I click Start Slicing. This slices the object into every pass it has to make and converts it into a format that the printer understands. I save it to a memory stick and take it over to, th to the printer. Then I press build on the printer and select my memory stick and it shows me a miniature version of the part I've just created. I select that and off it goes. It looks like I should have added a raft for it to sit on in the slicing program, but I forgot to record that part. But it was simple enough and only took a few minutes. And this time it got it right and it took three and a half hours to print. Don't be fooled by the time lapse recording.
surprisingly solid being as it's only just been printed. It takes a good bit of effort to pull the raft off this part with these pliers. A bit of fettling with a file and a bit of sandpaper gets rid of all the bits we don't need. And there it is, in its place. I'm well happy with that. A good job well done there, if you don't mind saying so myself. If you could just do us a small favour by clicking like on this video and consider subscribing to see whereabouts we're going to go from here. I'll put a link in the comment below of all the things that I've mentioned. And this part you can have for yourself if you can find any use for it. So then, there we have it. I won't be seeing you next time, you'll be seeing me. Tickle Pip. <laughs>